Hello, YouTube. Back here on this tiny little screen again. It is Adam Malik, Aaron, Aaron. And as another request, I am going to do Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, the second trailer. I wanted to do the first trailer. Well, not the first, first trailer, like the, the official trailer, but unfortunately, I just didn't have time to do it. But this one is it's pretty recent, and it is number one on trending. Still number one on trending after a day. So, uh, yeah, I am excited for this movie. This movie looks great. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't get crushed by the December competition because, whew, it's going to be, it might be a bloodbath. I mean, yeah, like Spider-Verse, and then the next week, you have Mary Poppins Returns, you have Bumblebee, you have Aquaman, you have Holmes and Watson, Alita... Battle Angel smartly got out of that and it's now in February, which I think was a good choice on Fox's behalf. And in that in their place, we have the PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2. So we'll see how that does. That could be interesting. But it's going to be an interesting Christmas. So let me tell you about that. So yes, Into the Spider-Verse. Let's see how this looks. So you have a little tease before. Now before we get to anything, just a little reminder. No audio because YouTube hates that. And also they don't like a, a, a video that continues to go, which is very annoying and it bothers me to death. And also this Spider-Man movie is different from all the others because it's not directly related to any continuity of Spider-Man. At least that's what we think. Although there are some... Oh, I hate when this happens. It's like friggin' random... I get random calls all the time. It's so stupid. Anywho, this is not directly related to any other Spider-Man. Not the Sam Raimi's, not the Mark Webb's, not the MCU, not Venom. <laughs> and, ooh, Venom. Mm, reactions are no good, but I'll probably still see it. Just... Out of curiosity, because I haven't been to the movies in three, well, not three, two months. It's been a long two months. A long two months of lackluster fare. <laughs> so, yes, I am going to see Venom, despite the pretty mm, not so good reputation. And I'm definitely seeing this. So, uh, yeah. So this is by itself, this movie is by itself, not not directly related to anything else. Just wanted to point that out. So let's continue. Yeah. There is a reference to Spider-Man 2. You know, where he stops the train. So maybe this is related. Maybe, maybe this Peter Parker that we're seeing, is it? Well, it's not Tommy McGuire. It'd be amazing if he came back to voice it, but he doesn't. Sadly. <laughs> but it does lead to some questions. I mean, I like the references, but is it, is it the same Peter Parker? We'll see. See, another one from the original Spider-Man where he's upside down kissing Mary Jane with his mask, you know, halfway off. The same thing happened there in the movies. And then here, he, like, right when he has dinner with MJ, you know, he has spider sense. And he sees a car coming his way. They're all from the Sam Raimi movies. So there is this theory that's out there that maybe this Spider-Man is the, you know, Tommy McGuire's Spider-Man. Except he's an adult. Maybe. Who knows? There's a lot of questions to this movie. Well, way to break the fourth wall, Spider-Man. Like Deadpool and uh, Teen Titans go to the movies and... Oh, Logan. Logan even broke the fourth wall by showing an X-Men comic. So, so this is not the first time we've seen this type of stuff. Yes, as you see right here, Spider-Man gets a Christmas album. I don't care you know, how long it takes. We need that album to happen. Hopefully around the time you know, the movie comes out. Because, you know, this movie comes out during December, Christmas time. It would be perfect if it came out right during that time. So, 
Come on, Sony. <laughs> Make it happen. Oh my gosh, that sad popsicle. Jeez, it's not even... Ooh. Even Sonic, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, he has a better popsicle than poor Spider-Man over here. This is sad. This is so sad. <laughs> ah, product placement. So here's our new protagonist in the Spider-Man movies. That isn't Peter Parker. I mean, Peter Parker's in this. He's one of the main characters, but our main, main character is Miles Morales. Miles Morales is starting to get a lot more popular, especially since he was uh, played a decent role in the new Spider-Man game for PS4, and that game is blowing up. I mean, it has great reviews, selling millions of copies. It sold, like, th over 3 million copies in only three days, which is pretty impressive. And, you know, Miles Morales, he's been, um, let's see, I know he was in the cartoon Ultimate Spider-Man during the Spider-Verse, you know, series of episodes. He has his own comic. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping this, you know, mainstream audiences are like, hey, I like this Miles Morales guy. He's not just, some say, ugh, he's just a Peter Parker ripoff. And from what I've seen, I haven't really studied the history of Miles Morales, but what I've seen, that's not true at all. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, mainstream, mainstream audiences like this guy. At least that's what I'm hoping. There's his dad. So Miles Morales' dad is like, let's just say similar to Captain Stacy in um, The Amazing Spider-Man. You know, Gwen Stacy's dad. Where he's not the biggest fan of Spider-Man. But eventually, you know. Because I know I have seen... I haven't played... Uh, I haven't played Spider-Man PS4. I want to so bad. But I don't have a PS4. And it really sucks. But I've seen all the cutscenes. Because I was just... I like, what is this game all about? I must, <laughs> I must know. So all that, um... You know... Miles Morales' dad in the game, he's a lot more receptive to Spider-Man. Maybe it's because they've worked for years. I don't know. But I guess in this version, you know, he just doesn't like him very much. Even though you know, Miles, Miles Morales is this universe Spider-Man, so, I mean, he doesn't know that. But then we got this little scene that is nice. It's, he's, you know, his dad being one of those parents who's just like, say I love you. And then Miles being like that type of kid who doesn't want to say it like in public. He's like, really? And his dad, since he's a cop car, you know, he's holding up traffic. Like, what the heck? <laughs> All that traffic right behind him. Well, granted, there is a stop sign right there, but mm, it's terrible. Well, he says it. So he's saying, "Hey, I'm the only I'm the only Spider-Man in my world." Well, that's about to be flipped upside down, as you soon see. So I don't know what exactly what's happening here. We have to go a little further. It's like right here. I'm not sure what's happening. I'm not sure what they're trying to do. But it does open a dimension gateway, I guess. And then that's how um, Peter Parker, at least older Peter Parker, meets, you know, Miles Morales. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Kingpin. Jeez. I mean, I know the internet makes jokes about Ryan Johnson and calling him Roundhead Ryan Johnson. But, ooh. <laughs> I mean, Ryan Johnson, he's got nothing on this, dude. I mean, oof. Kingpin. His head looks like a friggin' grapefruit. <laughs> my, my gosh. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's funny. And there's Spooderman. Well, I highly doubt Spooderman will even be in this movie. If he was, then I'd watch this... Uh, then this movie would get a 100 out of 10, like... Infinity out of 10 if Spooderman shows up in this movie. 
or if he's at least referenced in this movie. Yet you must reference Spooderman. But yes, this is how you know Peter Parker, you know, comes to this dimension like his little orb that looks somewhat like the orbs I've seen in the Wreck of Ralph two trailers. So that's interesting. So yeah, look at this art style. It's great. It's definitely has like. It's far different from anything Sony Animation has ever made. It's far more unique. It has a very comic book-esque style to it. Very accurate. Which I appreciate. And so these two figure out, hey, we both have spider sense, so we're both similar. Interesting. Yeah. And, and what's interesting is that this is actually the first time in any of the movies we really see an adult Peter Parker. Because... And on Spider-Man 3, like, Peter Parker was a young adult. And then in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, again, young adult. And the Spider-Man, you know, the MCU movies, he's a legit teenager. This is the first time we see adult Peter Parker in any of the movies. So that's pretty interesting. So he's using fries to... Sh to who's... He's using fries, french fries, to use as an analogy for how their universes are. He uses, like, that wet, soggy, disgusting fry as, you know, Miles Morales' universe. And he uses this perfectly normal fry as his universe. Yes. Yeah. So we got a little montage about to happen. See, they're just swinging. Yeah. Oh, look, another spider person. And we, 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 we've all seen this in the last trailer. We know who it is. We have Gwen Stacy over here, voiced by Haley Steinfeld. And she's also in Bumblebee, which comes out a week after this. So she's pretty busy <laughs> this uh, December. So, yes, um, I'm hoping this Gwen Stacy is far better than the other movie versions because Spider-Man 3, she was completely useless. She was only there to piss off Mary Jane. <laughs> and in many Spider-Man movies, you know, Emma Stone's portrayal, she, you know, for a character who's supposed to be so smart, like the valedictorian of her class, she makes the dumbest decisions and that ultimately leads to her death <laughs> in Amazing Spider-Man 2. Spoiler alert for Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, like it really matters because that movie is terrible. And if Amazing Spider-Man 3 was going to happen, both Gwen Stacy and her dad would be brought back to life like by Peter Parker, who's apparently gonna, would be like a mad scientist. Don't know why they would do that, but ugh, I'm glad that movie never happened. Hmm. So yes, this is when we see, she explains, hey, I'm from another dimension. So we got uh, Spider-Man Noir, voiced by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, the man who hates bees, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so Nicolas Cage can now join what's now starting to become a long list of actors who have been associated with a DC property and a Marvel property because in Teen Titans Go to the Movies, Nicolas Cage, he voices Superman in that m movie. And now he's voicing Spider-Man Noir in this movie. So, you know, it's nice he can join that list. Okay, you know, I'm not sure. Well, hold on. We need to go back. Sit. My goodness. <laughs> I'm not sure who this is. I might need to study on my Spider-Verse knowledge a little more. But man, this is definitely looks like the Japanese anime Spider-Man. Well, he's the Spider-Person in the Spider-Verse. Which is, you know, interesting. And guess guess what, you know, guess what she uses as her little, you know, spider costume. She has a freaking robot, which, you know, you know, the Jap you know, Japanese, if you see any Japanese anime, you know, they love robots. <laughs> they really love robots. And I remember, 
It was like this old, old clip. It was like a crossover between Spider-Man and Voltron, I believe. And it is both the most bizarre thing and the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Yeah, it's weird. You should really look it up. It's, it is something. So you're probably like, well, what other spider people are going to show up? Yes, we have a fan favorite, Spider Ham, who is a pig in a spider costume. So, yes, compared to everybody else, like, you know, he's the one that will, that will really stand out. But my question is, where is Spider-Man 2099? Where is he? Because, you know, he's been used a lot in the Spider-Verse, particularly two games. Like, the first was Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which, you know, is all about the a small taste of the Spider-Verse. And then Edge of Time, which is essentially a standalone DLC um, of Shadow Dimensions. He plays a major role in that too. So where is he in the movie? You mean, he might be in this movie. Maybe. No one's quite sure. They're probably keeping a lot of secrets from us. So we'll see when it comes out December 14th. Yeah. Yeah. You got this nice shot of all the spider people. It's pretty nice. <laughs> but yeah, are these going to be the only spider people? I doubt it. There, there has to be more. What about, um, what is it? The Spider Knight. Yeah, Spider Knight, you know, from the medieval times. I remember that from the cartoon. He has to be in here. And, you know, of course, Spider Man 2099. But who else? I know there's a bunch of other spider. Spider people. So, we'll see. So they're like, okay, we need to fix this problem. We all need to go back to our other universes or else the, the whole thing is going to collapse. You know, all universes will collapse and we will all have no home. So, that's the plot. Or at least that's the goal. Yeah. Hold on, who is that? I'm trying to figure out right right here. Who is that? I'm not sure who that is. I don't recognize him. Probably some either it's a villain I've never heard of before or it's a new villain. So I guess. Yeah, that's definitely Kingpin. Is that Scorpion? I think that's Scorpion. I mean, we must go back a little bit. Yeah, that looks that looks like Scorpion. Definitely has a scorpion tail. And who's that behind him? Let's move this. Oh, it's just an arm. <laughs> I thought it would be somebody else. But yes, this is... Definitely looks like Scorpion, or at least a variation of Scorpion. Not sure who that was. So, you know, I saw, you know, Peter Parker has, like, has a picture of Mary Jane. So they're probably either together or at least, you know, in the PS4 game, they, is you know, revealed they had, like, an off break. Well, they, they took a break from each other because, you know, he's Spider-Man. You know, the superhero rule, you can't have someone you love because if you do, the villain can use that as leverage against the hero. So... They did break up, but they were they eventually came back together in the game. So, I'm not sure how that relationship will work, but whatever. Oh, did you notice that? Right here, right here. See, they use like little comic panels, like boom, wham, pow, shazam. Well, I can't say that because that's another property, but yes, I like that touch. Definitely makes it even more like a comic book, which is nice. No. Yes, this this was actually a pretty nice, a pretty funny scene. We got Miles Morales. He's trying to like hide his voice that way it isn't super obvious. But then he says, "I love you," and his dad's like, "Hey, what?" <laughs> you know, that was a pretty funny moment. Yes, yeah, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, so. Oh, there's another part here. You got all the Spider-People on the wall. Not sure how this happens. 
Well, well, you knocked him out. Good job, guys. You know, because just because Spider Man, Spider Ham just had the talk because he was like, "Do animals talk in this world?" Because you know, I don't want to freak him out. And well, he and you passed him out. So good job, Spider Ham. Hey guys, Miles Morales here. Many people were comparing this to Black Panther because you know, everybody knows like the poster of Black Panther where he's did like the same pose, like the same type of statue. And I was like, wow, I didn't notice that before. Well, I, I kind of did, but now I really notice it. Only on the big screen Christmas. So we're going to see what happens with this movie. Will it succeed or will it get eaten alive by the competition? I think there's a good chance of succeeding. Because, you know, it's only real competition, you know, direct, direct competition, well, is Record Ralph 2, and that comes out a couple weeks before. So Spider-Verse, it'll win, it'll definitely win the weekend when it comes out. The next weekend, it probably won't, because if I had to guess which movie would win that weekend, you know, Christmas weekend, my money's on Aquaman for opening, but for the long term... I think Mary Poppins will end up making more money because it's Mary frickin' Poppins. <laughs> Bumblebee, I don't know. Holmes and Watson, I don't know. Uh, yeah, a lot of... Mortal Engines, I think it's just gonna die a horrible death. I suggest that just moves to January. But, yeah. Overall, this movie looks great. Definitely gonna see it, without a doubt. You know, I'm hoping it lives up to the hype because this movie has a lot of hype surrounding it. So we'll see what happens. So hope you like this video. You know, what do you think of the Spider Verse trailer? Do you think it looks as you think it looks great? Do you think it's gonna succeed at the box office when it comes out this December? I think it will. So yeah, let me know in the comments. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, and I will see you all next time. And I am out.